Hey, this is Brian Stillman. I'm at CES 2020, Las Vegas, Nevada, Las Vegas Convention Center. I'm here talking to Kimberly Mosley with Astra. Now this, a lot of you guys know because I babble a lot, that I am a huge, huge, huge toy fan. I've worked on documentaries about toys, I collect toys, I work on TV shows about toys, I talk about toys way too much. Um, I love toys, I love the toys I grew up on, uh, I love toys that are coming out today. So I'm particularly thrilled to be talking to you, Kimberly. Oh, thank you. Astra, what is Astra? Astra stands for the American Specialty Toy Retailing Association. Association. See, so you're dealing with toy stores, yes. toy retailers, the, yes. the community toy stores, the small Absolutely. toy stores that I grew up on. There you go. So think in terms of your neighborhood toy store. So that neighborhood toy store that you feel like is your toy store, oh, yeah. they're often members of Astra. Okay, so what does Astra do? What is Astra's goal? So Astra is a trade organization to support toy stores. We have membership that includes toy stores, toy manufacturers, and sales reps that rep toys and other children's products, juvenile products. Now is it just the community level? Does it include some chain stores like the Dearly Departed Toys R Us? No, oh, um, sure. Or, okay, so it's so, all... So it includes those toy stores, those toy retailers that operate as uh, locally owned and independently operated. Okay. So if it's a chain that is uh, has a more corporate approach to operations, right. they usually don't find a home with Astra, but those okay. folks that are serving their community individually, right. those are the folks that find a home in our community. Okay, great. Um, so one of the things that I find interesting is, you know, when people think of toys, you know, like we were talking right before here, people think of, oh, the local toy store, it's blocks and wood cars and this and that, mm -hmm. but it's really more than that. Oh, the toys are much most, more far, think, most far definitely. forward thinking yes. than that technology and these can be found at local toy stores as well. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about that. The changing nature of the toys that are, are found at local toy stores these right. days. So the, like you said, the nature of toys are changing. Yeah. Kids are expecting different kinds of interactions. Parents and caregivers are expecting different kinds of interactions. And our toy store owners know that. So they carry everything. They carry traditional classic toys. We were talking earlier about Light Bright. So they carry those kinds of toys. But they also carry tech toys. And in fact, as a parent or caregiver, if you're not quite sure about a tech toy, maybe you're not quite sure how it works and you want more insight on that or you want to make sure it's a good product for your child at their age level or their interests, you can talk to the toy store owners, talk to the folks that work at the toy store. They have that expertise and they can help you make a good selection. And also talk to you about any limits that you might want to put on how much time the child is spending with a tech toy right. versus get outside and play, right. get some sunshine. I remember as a kid going to a local toy store and they knew what I was into. Uh -huh. And I would show up and they'd be like, oh, Brian. And yes. Sometimes my mom wasn't always thrilled about this, but they'd be like, oh, Brian, we know you know, you, you love G.I. Joe. The la This thing the came latest. in, you know, we just oh, got the yeah. new figures in mm -hmm. um, and we were holding this one for you or doing whatever. Right. That's certainly something that I never got at any of the chain stores. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that level of uh, service, but that level of like community interactivity, that, yes. that involvement with the community community is something that these stores bring to the market. Yes, absolutely. So one of the things that you'll find with your local neighborhood toy store is that they are very integrated in the community. Um, it's more, the local neighborhood toy store is more likely, for example, to um, support the, the Little League baseball team. Right. Or um, to be a member of the Chamber of Commerce. So they're very integrated with the community and they're looking for how to best serve the community, best serve the kiddos that are in their community. Do you find that local stores are more nimble when it comes to emerging technology and toys? You know, it's, I know that if you want to get a chain store to carry your product, there are certain numbers you have to be able to hit, you have to do this, you have to do that. But I would think, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, that local stores are maybe a little, e it's a little easier for them to say, okay, well, we'll try this out, we'll check this out, yes. and we can think of who this might appeal to. Yes, you're right on, Brian. So one of the things that we do annually as an organization is we have a big show in June, and it is where where manufacturers are able to set up a, set up their booth and show toy store owners their wares and very often we'll have what we call new players and we have a, a whole section called the new players park okay in the new players park you can bring your new product maybe it's new to market and let th these toy store owners test it out kick the tires if you will get a sense of it and often that is how some of these small manufacturers get started um, 
And I imagine for things like tech, that's particularly important because a lot of these products that are coming out are kind of different, are kind of innovative, mm -hmm. and don't necessarily have a track record. You know, we, we just saw a product called the uh, Octobo, yeah. and it's like, well, that's not something that... Uh, a store owner can't look at that and say, okay, there's a history of these types of toys, right. so clearly this one will be a hit or a miss. Mm -hmm. um, every time something new from tech comes out, you really have to sort of assess it on its own merits and right. cross your fingers. Mm -hmm. um, how, do, how do local stores navigate that and stay up on things right. um, and make those kind of predictions, uh, especially when they're not doing the volume of a chain store, so really it's, you have to be careful. Yes. Well, these guys are feet on the floor, so think yeah. in terms of your neighborhood toy store. Most often, that owner is actually working the floor, interacting with the parents and caregivers, interacting with the kids. They know what works. They know what doesn't work. So our toy stores knew about fidget spinners. They knew about fingerlings long before they got popular. They knew that was going to hit the market hard. So they've got some good insights on what works, what doesn't work. And they're willing, like you said before, they're more nimble, so they're willing to take chances on new products. They're willing to see, you know, maybe smaller volume, but they're willing to bring in small volume, see if it's going to fly, and then order more as it becomes popular. You know, small stores first had to contend with the chains. They have to contend with, so you got your Toys R Us, and long ago you had KB Toys. Um, but then you also have things like Walmart, and then Amazon comes along. What do you tell, um, and, and what are you telling small store owners um, to help them navigate this? It's, it's a perilous time in any industry, but toys in particular. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, there's lots of disruptors out there, right? Um, it's a reality that consumers, customers want choices. They want to be able to shop online sometimes. They want big box sometimes. But they also want local. They want to be able to walk their neighborhood. They also want to be able to get on their bicycle, right. ride downtown. They want to go to their local cafe and have a cup of coffee. So consumers want choices. We're not expecting that uh, local businesses are going to go away. They've, right. they've been impacted Back when Montgomery Ward first opened catalog sales, right. they've right. been impacted. Right. There's, there have always been challenges. They face those challenges. But the reality is people want local business, and local businesses will give you the level of customer service and customer experience that you won't get with online, and you probably won't get with Big Box. So one of the things that we've seen recently that I found was really interesting is, you know, CDs came along, wiped out records, but now we're seeing a resurgence, resurgence. of vinyl. Yeah. Um, bookstores, you know, Barnes & Noble came in, wiped out local bookstores. Mm -hmm. Amazon came in, wiped out Barnes & Noble. Yeah. But now we're seeing this resurgence of local bookstores. Mm -hmm. People are talking about the sort of boutique book shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, comic book stores, uh, a little hit or miss. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we're seeing these sort of local um, institutions returning. Mm -hmm. Are we seeing that yet with toy stores? Um, what are the trends in sort of uh, with toy stores in that regard? Right. You're seeing that with local toy stores. You You're are. seeing that with local business, period. Okay. So you'll see more and more city planners are building cities that have a walkable footprint. And um, elected leaders are paying attention to that, and they're looking and they're building areas of the city that support small business, that support local businesses, so that the people in their um, area will have that walkable option. How has it changed for toy store owners? Because you have, this is something you didn't have when I was a kid. You have these sort of two components to toys. And I'm not talking about antique toys, but there is the toys for the collector market. Mm -hmm. um, so throwback toys that are, you know, bringing back 80s toys and stuff like that, um, that are very clearly geared towards people my age. And then also toys that are meant for kids. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously some of those are meant for both. Sure. Um, how is that sort of bifurcation uh, affecting the local toy industry or local toy stores, community toy stores? Toy store owners and toy manufacturers are paying attention to that trend yeah. and they're beginning to build toys from the perspective of play is important across the lifespan not just when you're a child you know as you grow older you need to keep those uh, brain synopses fiery right um, and especially for seniors that are suffering from depression or loneliness through play there's an opportunity for community there's an opportunity for interacting with others there's an opportunity to keep those brain synapses firing yeah. so toy manufacturers and toy store owners are building their product lines with toy, with play across the lifespan in mind so you're going to see packaging that's a little bit different not just geared towards children you're going to see um, 
toy stores with layouts that have areas for seniors as well as for children. Um, so yes, they are paying attention to the fact and they know that play is important across the lifespan. Toy culture is something that we never had. When I, in, in the, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, toys were out there, but you played with them and then you were expected to move away from them. Yeah. By the 70s and 80s, especially with the advent of Star Wars toys, which transformed the landscape entirely, <laughs> um, we entered something of toy culture, where yes. kids were growing up with these toys and then wanted to enter the toy industry. They wanted to become toy sellers mm -hmm. or toy makers. Mm -hmm. um, they brought this forward with them. So meeting adults who are seeing value in toys, mm -hmm. um, maybe interacting with them differently, but seeing the value of toys as objects yes. is different than you saw with, say, my parents' generation. I would agree. Is that affecting things and, yes. and how? I think it's affecting things and I think in a positive way. I think we had maybe a period of time when we were not paying enough attention to play. We thought, right. well, you know, once you're over a certain age, you shouldn't be playing anymore. That's it. Um, and now I think they, we, we recognize, maybe educators also recognize the importance of play. We're bringing recess back. Yeah. We're bringing unstructured play back. There's, there's not as much of a rush to fill every hour with a play date. <laughs> right. You know, there's an opportunity for some unstructured, creative time for children. And there's also the recognition that adults need to play. That's how we reduce our stress. That's how we uh, become more creative. That's how we build teams. It's, right. it's an important part of corporate America. It's an important part of being an adult to play. Well, you see that in the explosion of tabletop gaming and yes. stuff like that. I mean, parents or adults might not be playing with action figures yeah, the way yeah. we did as kids, but we're playing games. Yes, we're we different are. things from role-playing games to mm -hmm. tabletop games mm -hmm. to whatever, even video games. It's becoming games. really popular for people to have game, to house, uh, host a game day at their house. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We see it all the time. Uh, a lot of my friends are involved in game design, uh, games and education. Mm -hmm. So that's a, certainly a big part of my life. Um, and uh, yeah, um, so what are, uh, moving forward, what are the trends that we can expect to see in terms of uh, community toy stores, neighborhood toy stores, and, um, and where they're going, especially in terms of new toys and tech toys coming out? So one of the things you're going, that you'll see now and that you'll continue to see is experience. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about going to a toy store to buy a toy. It's about going to a toy store to have the interaction, to have the experience. You know, our toy stores will have a game day or they'll have kit day where you come in and put together a kit or um, the Easter Bunny will be there right. or story time. And, and while the kids are interacting and, and maybe listening to a story, you've got parents that are able to socialize with one another, network with each other, learn from each other. So it is going to be a trend towards more and more experiential kinds of opportunities. Um, and then the transaction will happen because of that. Awesome. One more question. Sure. What's your favorite toy? Oh. What was your favorite toy as a kid? <laughs> Well, my favorite toy as a kid was actually Barbie, but okay. not because I like to dress her up, because I like to take her head off. <laughs> <laughs> Man, they also made like groovy ghoulies. It seems like that might have been your, more did. your speed. Yeah, I did. I, I like to take them apart and see how they were put together. <laughs> awesome. Kimberly, thank you so much Thanks, for joining Brian. us. It was great talking to you. It's a pleasure. See, all sorts of interesting <laughs> stuff coming out of CES. Check out your local toy store, man. Go out there, buy some <laughs> toys, support your local businesses. This is Brian Stillman. I'm with uh, Be Terrific. We're at CES 2020. We'll be back with a lot more.